Hey guys, Pete Peppers here. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, so I'm going to go... I was actually going back to watch this um, vision of the past that Bran has in Season 6, Episode 6, where he um, is leaving the Weirwood, the heart tree where the children of the forest were, and um, Mira is dragging them away in the snow, and he's still sort of... Um, ingesting the information that the three-eyed raven gave him um it happens in a flash there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can see but i wanted to break it down a little bit closer so i figured i'd make a video of it so this is, will have a lot of spoilers in it obviously if you haven't been watching this season and um this is what the first part of it looks like in regular speed you know, you get a, an idea, you see him falling, you see um, the White Walkers, you see Mad King Eris there, and you see his father. So let's slow it down, and let's look at it sort of piece by piece. Alright, so the first thing we see are the pyromancers below... Um, below the ground here in King's Landing and they are working on wildfire and we see there's no real indication as far as I can tell of when this was if this is in the past or if this is in the present but we you know if even if you've never read the books you're familiar with wildfire from earlier in the series when um, Tyrion uses the wildfire that Cersei uh, started making to um, help out in the Battle of Blackfire, or Blackwater, sorry. Then right after that, we see a quick glimpse of the dragon. And you can also see that it's, it's over King's Landing, or it appears to be over King's Landing. And again, we don't know if this is past, present, or future, um, but just in the dialogue of the show, it kind of seems like it's probably in the near future now we see mad king aries um this would be if you don't if you never read the books mad king aries was the king that robert baratheon took the throne from and jamie lannister um the, the reason why he's called the king slayer is because he killed it killed uh king aries targaryen and aries targaryen is also Daenerys's father. So we see a quick shot of him, and he's upset. Um, they call him the Mad King for a reason. He used the wildfire to um, do a lot of damage around the city and on the uh, on his own own people. And then we see the Night's King. He is. We'll go back for a second. He's sort of doing his uh, lifting his arms thing where he brings all the wildlings back as whites. And then we got a quick view of this character whose name I don't remember, but she was the likable wildling that um, decided that she was going to go with Jon Snow. But um, when the battle happened, she couldn't fight the children, the whites that were kids, so she ended up... Um, coming away herself when they tore her apart so i think that was just sort of a thing of like even characters you like can end up being mindless whites that are controlled by the knight's king and the, the other white walkers so then we see bran fall um but what i thought about was interesting about this was he, bran still doesn't remember you know falling and it, it shows him fall, which he knows he did, but it doesn't have any indication as to why, what he, you know, what he was up there doing, what he saw, which is really more important as far as, as things go. So we don't, we, you know, he, he, he sees his own fall, but he doesn't have any kind of revelation towards the fact that Jamie Lannister is the one that. Um, pushed him down because he saw them sleeping together. 
So then we see the sun coming up over the frozen landscape here. It's notable, I guess, because it's dark and you see the sun rising. Could also mean, like, you know, foreshadowing the coming of winter, so on and so forth. There's a lot of that could be going on there. And then Bran sees his own mother get her throat slit. We see the dragon again. Dragon flying, see King's Landing. And then we see Daenerys from the first season when she came from the fire or uh, Drogo's funeral pyre, unscathed, unburnt, with the the hatched dragon on her shoulder. And then we see the Night's King, the first time we saw him taking one of um, Craster's babies to become, be turned into a White Walker in this little ceremony scene that we had from before. There's the, the new White Walker. Dragon again, Mad King Ares again, Knight's King again, Dragon, Dragon, Baby White Walker, and then we have Eddard Stark as a man grown down at King's Landing about to get his head chopped off for treason. After he basically tried to let everyone know that Joffrey and Tommen were bastards from incense, from incest, from Jamie, I mean, uh, from Cersei and Jamie having a child. All right, so then we skip ahead to his next sequence. We'll watch it in fast time, real quick. Some of the same imagery, some of it's a little bit more um, more complete, and then we have other scenes as well. So we'll look at it frame by frame in one second. All right, so what do we have here? We have... Starts out again with the um, sun rising over the frozen landscape. And again, we get the dragon flash in the King's Landing flash. Another another shot of Daenerys, another shot of Craster's baby and the Night's King turning him into White Walker. And then we see a bunch of crows or ravens, whatever you want to call them, and this and um and it's a lot of them kind of reminds me for book readers kind of reminds me of cold hands and his crows but um here there's no real context it's just crows and then we see the roots of the werewoods um which could be an indication of where this comes from or just the fact that there's more to that I mean, there's definitely a lot more to that in the in the underlying thing. We don't know how much we'll see about that in the show, but then we see the pyromancers again um, filling jars with wildfire. No real idea of whether it's in the past or present or even in the future. But they got a cool looking bottle that they keep it in. And then we got Mad King Ares again. And this is um, the scene where he screams from the Iron Throne, burn them all. And then we see this. This is uh, one of the more interesting clips. Um, this is not something we saw on the show before. And it is wildfire destroying what looks like the area where they were storing all this wildfire. <clears throat> So we're not really sure what that is. Um, could be could be a big disaster that happens. Could be a future uh, situation where the um, 
you know, where someone in King's Landing uses the, the stalks of wildfire to destroy it. Or it could even be like what would have happened if the Mad King had his way and this didn't happen. And this is Jamie as he, you know, in his role as the King's Hand, or not the King's Hand, but the King's Guard. He was guarding Ares whenever the Lannisters came to the city. Uh, the Mad King wanted him to kill his own father and was, you know, going off about, like, let's burn everybody. Let's, you know, basically burn all of my enemies, which is pretty much everybody at this point. And instead, Jamie became the Kingslayer by breaking his oath to protect the king and pulling his sword. Then we got young Ned. Young Ned during Robert's Rebellion at the Tower of Joy. We saw some flashbacks of this. Um, if you read the books, you know the, the dream that he has that haunts him. This comes from this period of time. And he says, where's my sister? And then we see this scene where that looks like his hand based on, the, on what he's wearing. Um, it's blood. It's apparently inside the Tower of Joy. That's a sister Leanna's body and her hand and blood, which would be most likely for all intents and purposes. And there's really not another alternate theory here, but she just gave birth. And as a result, she dies, asks Ned to do something to promise her something. And then we see his bloody hand with his sister's blood turn into a fist. And then we see Jamie uh, stabbing Mad King in his back. And killing the last Targaryen king. See Rob getting stabbed by Bruce Bolton. We see the king die. See another sequence of the crow, and we see Rob fall to the ground. That happened at the Red Wedding, obviously, in the phrase when the phrase betrayed the North. And then we see Leaf making the first white White Walker from the last episode. And then we see one of the White Walkers. This isn't a white, this is an actual White Walker. One of the others, the Council of the King, when he is um, coming after Jon Snow from the Hardhome scene, and Jon finding Longclaw, which he had dropped during the fight, fight, and obviously the Valerian Steel turns out to negate the magic that the um, White Walkers have. And then we see Jamie Lannister sitting on the Iron Throne, which, you know, from the books is where they found him after he killed the king. And another shot of this wildfire explosion. Another, another quick shot of the dragon, another quick shot of that. Um, Daenerys with baby dragon baby white walker and crows leaf mad king wildfire is cool because it's green and that's that one all right so now we go to the next one and this one is, uh, this is what it looks like in full speed, regular speed. A lot of hard home stuff, a lot of um, whites, images of the whites. And then we see the whites in the woods are closing in on him and Mira. And we'll look at it frame by frame, so... 
So he falls again. Um, we've seen that one repeated several times. And then we see the pyromancer. So of, there's something going to go happen. There's something important happening with wildfire, obviously. Um, Brand's falling was important for several reasons. And, um, yeah, the Mad King, we see him again. Uh, but what does it mean? You know, it's hard to say. Um, he's really not that important to the show at this point since, you know, we don't really go into prehistory, so, um, you know, I don't know, you guys could tell me what you think in the comments of why they're showing that, um, in relation to everything else, I mean, the, the other stuff, like, his fall, and, um, after the Pyromancer's Alchemist Guild, we see, you know, the Whites, the Whites obviously are a, a real threat for the future, um, but not sure why, you know, the Mad King is, except for maybe that it's also foreshadowing the fact that Wildfire, Wildfire is going to play a big part of this confrontation that's coming up between the others and man. And that would also include the Children of the Forest and everybody else, because... You know, if it's anything like the um, the long night, then you know we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, again, see him rising. You know, bringing the dead back to life as whites to fight in his army. That's sort of their thing. Bran looks at the army. That's a flashback from when he first went to. When he first went into the Weirwood net without um, supervision from the, the Blood Raven. Again, the, the Whites charging the uh, stronghold at Hardhome, coming through the wall. Another look at how they're dead, but they're not decaying. And obviously the thing about Hardhome is is when these whites came, they uh, exponentially increased the number of whites in the army because they killed everybody that was there, all the wildlings that were holed up there trying to decide what to do. This is that awesome scene where they all come flying down over the mountain, um, just showing the resilience and just how they don't really, they can do things that make them really hard to destroy. <laughs> you know, they can fall from distance. And then we see the whites closing in on Brandon Mira again. In real time. He's still, he's, this is where he starts to wake up a little bit. Another picture of the Night King with his newly formed or newly, uh, grown army you know that just got a whole lot bigger like i was saying and that was a great scene i guess that really kind of goes on for a while the wall the and here was those children that um the kid whites children that were that were killed that turned into whites that Took out the likable character. Here is the reanimated horse that the Night King and the other White Walkers ride around on their dead. Um, horses don't live beyond the wall. Um, so, you know, whatever, that's just a Well they're not, you know, they don't they don't hang out and just you know, it's a it's a really um wildlings don't ride horses, let's put it that way. Not the normal, everyday ones. Picture of the people coming back to life. And back to the Whites and Bran. One more little flash here, right before he wakes up. Um, see the Whites in, the, in regular time, and then some ominous... Uh, 
footage of what we have in store perhaps so we'll look at this real quick and then that'll be that so right here we have flash of that wall coming down just to really the fact that nothing is safe that's what that's what it makes me think about like nothing is safe once this power is unleashed kids aren't safe our heroes aren't safe. We see John there looking at the knights. Everything turns to chaos, and this this is from the um, from that scene. I, I think it is. It's from the scene that you know, one of the very first scenes where we saw the White Walkers, where they're marching with their army, looking pretty. Looking pretty tough. The Knights King checking out his battle. Above Hard Home. And another of the the Wild Walkers and their army traveling across the icy field. And then the climactic ending of it all. This is from Bran's Weirwood trip, like I said, where he went without the Blood Raven and he saw the, um, the Whites and the area where the first white walker was created and the knight's king is sort of right there and before bran knows what's going on he reaches out and he marks them and this is what led to them being able to break the um the spell around the, the the tree and be able to enter in and destroy everything inside and kill everybody including the children and hodor so there's that there's the there's the mark and that ends the uh, sequence and when they go back and then of course you probably watched the rest of the episode and saw what happened so what do you think it means um Obviously, a lot of repeated imagery, fire, um, dragons, wildfire, uh, the history. You see a lot of the, you know, what's happened to Bran's family up until this point. You see Daenerys being reborn with her dragons and that dragon flying over Westeros and um, King's Landing in particular. So, a lot of stuff. Why is it important? We don't really know, but it, I think it was pretty interesting. Um, like I said, I don't usually make Game of Thrones videos. I watch a lot of them, and I'm a, I'm a big fan. But um, I just wanted to I wanted to look at this scene and break it down, so I thought I would. I'd be uh, happy to share some insights and thoughts in the comments if you leave questions. Um, I'm a big fan of both the books and the shows, so check it out. Tell me what you think. Um, Give the video a like and um, subscribe to my channel. Talk to you soon.